Please welcome Thomas and Frederick. Thank you. We are Circle Biomedical, a mucus engineering company developing a novel non-hormonal contraceptive for women. Today, there are 125 million women that use a contraceptive in Europe and in the US, on average for more than 30 years. For more than 50 years, the number one solution has been the hormonal contraceptives. However, this is changing, and it's rapidly changing. Um, due to increased awareness of the side effects and also increased sci scientific evidence of the side effects. Today, we, for instance, know that the risk of developing a depression is increased by 80% when using hormonal contraception. Uh, this means that today, more than 28 million women believe it's extremely important that their contraceptive does not contain hormones. The problem is, if we look at the market, the alternatives are extremely limited. So the products that are convenient to use are highly invasive, either being a systemic drug or an implant. On the other hand, the products that are not invasive are inconvenient to use. So the technology we are bringing to the market fits this uh, gap in the market. And the value proposition that we're bringing is a minimally invasive approach to contraception, where we only modify the mucus layer in the cervix. It's highly convenient, working within minutes, having extended uh, protection, and we focus on creating a great user experience. Right, so the way we'll achieve this kind of unique value proposition is uh, by leveraging the woman's own natural barrier. And in the reproductive tract, that is the cervical mucus. So it's a gel that sits between the vagina and the uterus. There's a cervical canal. And um, that gel is a really good barrier to sperm cells, actually, throughout the menstrual cycle. With that round ovulation, it loosens up completely and then allows sperm cells to go through. So what we're doing is we're delivering these capsules that you can see here that dissolves in the vagina and releases the polymer that can interact strongly with cervical mucus. And by interacting, it closes down the pores and prevents the sperm from going in. Then the sperm are maintained into the vagina and where local like, base, uh, acidic pH will disactivate them pretty quickly. Now, the, uh, the effect is reversible since natural turnover of mucus will shed kind of that complex away after some time. Now, we have very strong in vitro proof of concept. Here you see two images, one to the left where sperm can happily swim through unmodified mucus, and to the right, we've modified the mucus and it forms this kind of capsule uh, that sperm can bump their head against. Uh, we also have access to human ovulatory cervical mucus and human sperm, and we uh, have developed these assays uh, where we kind of recreate an artificial cervix filled with cervical mucus that we expose to sperm, uh, and then look at how sperm swim through uh, the capillary tubes. And you can see the, the results of the experiment. We've done a number of times. You can see untreated mucus with a distribution of sperm along this, the, the, the capillary tube. And when we treat the mucus, that completely blocks the entrance uh, of sperm. So we have 100% efficacy in vitro. Uh, the polymer that we're using also has a very strong um, track record of safety. Uh, we've done assays on using in vitro models of epithelial cells, showing no cytotoxicity there, um, and also on sperm, uh, showing through these DNA fragmentation uh, uh, data that there is no cytotoxicity on, on sperm cells. We're just targeting the cervical mucus. Now, the, uh, the results, scientific result, and our scientific approach in general has been validated really by major uh, actors in the contrastive space. Um, so the Reproductive Health Investors Alliance um, has gone through a very thorough four-month due diligence process and is now actually our first investor. Um, and there's also a big pharma company that we've been discussing with, have reviewed it with internal scientists, and have provided us a very strong letter of support as well. Now we have a patent that covers uh, this uh, group of polymers that can achieve very efficiently this uh, barrier reinforcing effect, um, filed in 2017, and it is owned now by Circle Biomedical. In terms of regulatory path to market, uh, we're uh, classified as a class 2B in the EU and class 2 in the US, so a medical device, not a drug. And um, we're very fortunate to have this FDA guideline uh, that, uh, for vaginal barrier contraceptive that we can follow. And it's composed of these two phases uh, comprising 250 subjects altogether. Uh, and in the next few months, we'll finalize our cl classification by leveraging these uh, 513G uh, uh, mechanism in the U.S. and contacting um, also in the, in the, e in the EU 
uh, the notified bodies. Yeah, so we have exciting opportunities uh, in terms of go-to-market. We can partner with one of the established companies in the industry, but we can also uh, use some of the new online platforms and thereby access millions of users from day one. But we could also create our own platform and control distribution. We're focused on building a team of A players from academia and from the medtech industry. Uh, I'm Frederick Masson. I'm the CEO of Circle Biomedical. I've been working in the contraceptive space for the past four years, developing an in-depth understanding of the user needs and the commercialization process. I've uh, also been working in the Danish Medtech uh, Association, um, building a strong network within the industry. Yeah, and I'm Thomas Jose, so I'm the CSO of Circle Biomedical, and I'm also a researcher and group leader at the Royal Institute of Technology, KTH, as in Sweden and uh, Stockholm. Um, and I have a background in bioengineering, um, and in 2011, I went to MIT for a postdoc uh, in a group working on mucus. Uh, and so I kind of fused my background in bioengineering and started seeing this mucus as a material that we can actually engineer uh, via topical treatments. Um, and so that led to this mucus engineering field that we're working on. And we, about two years ago, I met Frederick Matson, and we, um, by talking, we realized some, some of the inventions that we're coming up with in our group can be translated into a really new technology for contraception. Yeah. Um, our next key hire is the CEO to bring in experience transforming an early concept into an approved product. So during uh, the BAA program, we have matured our case in a number of ways, uh, regulatory affairs, IP, product design. We've been able to validate investor interest from some of the later stage investors. Uh, we have raised uh, pre-seed funding from the Reproductive Health Investors Alliance in San Francisco. So really from entering the program, we came as a team with a good idea and we leave as a funded startup. Thank, Thank you. you. Sebastian, do you have comments? <coughs> yes. Uh, yes, I do. Thanks uh, again for a great presentation, and uh, I think you have a very clear aspiration. Um, I'm not sure I entirely understood your go-to-market uh, approach. You say you had uh, three or have three different uh, opportunities, mm -hmm. but I guess you could already bring them in now to de-risk uh, your clinical studies and make them part of this uh, journey. Uh, what are your thoughts around that? Yeah, so we already have discussions uh, with one industrial partner. Um, they're very interested, but we want to keep our options open because we don't think necessarily it's the best path to partner up with one of these companies. Uh, we also had a meeting with one of these online uh, telemedicine solutions, trying to discuss if they could be interested in partnering up, and they're very interested. So really, we see these options, and we also see the option of going alone um, with the right kind of funding. So at this point, we're still keeping all options open. Yeah, I also want to thank you for a very good presentation and very clear sort of uh, the concept. Um, so obviously, eventually you'd have to do a, a larger clinical trial, but what is on the near term sort of a major de-risking activity where you know that uh, the observations you've done in vitro in a Petri dish uh, somehow is representative of what happened in real life? Uh, obviously, there are a few steps uh, between the Petri dish and, yes. <laughs> and the actual, uh, actual life. So what, what can you do in the short term to, to, to demonstrate the effect that you yeah. need? Yeah, in terms of preclinical studies, we've uh, divided that actually into two phases. But the first phase is really to do exactly that, de-risk as fast as possible. Um, and to do that, we'll go in an animal model, so we've identified sheep actually as the as a proper one. And we'll use kind of an innovative technique. We could do live imaging um, by using fiber optic confocal fluorescence microscopy. Uh, so basically, we can track the presence of these polymers, but also the presence of the, of the sperm within the reproductive tract. So we can understand where the polymer interacts, how long it stays there, what is the dynamics, what are the dynamics, and then we could track the sperm localization as well, making sure that we do have a, a barrier in there. Um, and that should already kind of convert everyone that this is feasible in vivo. And how much, how much money do you need to come to that point? That's 0 0.5 million euros uh, overall with the, with the other activities. Uh, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Yep, thank you. Very interesting. Thank you.